Hey there, baseball fans. It's Ben, and I'm opening today a random smattering of baseball card packs going from 1990, I think is the oldest, to 1992. So it's super narrow. Oh, no, 1986 with these little ones. So not a, not a huge um, spread of years, but we've got a couple little ones in here of different types, and then some 1990 randoms and uh, 91 and 92. So let's start it off with these little 1986 tops, super glossy. Major League Leaders subset. There are 66 cards total in this set. Some of the leaders are just interesting that um, you wouldn't think of them as league leaders, but like Toby Hara, who we, we did learn previously, was uh, had quite a career. Daryl Evans, who was number one in home runs that year with 40. Remarkable. Oh, look at that. There's Nolan Ryan. That'll, that'll go in my personal collection. We'll put that aside over here. Brett Butler and Britt Burns. Britt Burns, huh? Just taking a look at there at the back. I don't know much about him. Kind of feel like maybe I should. So let's put that aside for now. Maybe there's something worth learning there. Another pack of these. These sold for 25 cents back in the day. Coming with six cards in there. As well as a sweepstakes entry. Maybe if I enter now, I can go to the 1987 spring training. Not much in there. Now we're on to 1990 Fleer. It's uh, not the world's greatest set. There's some interesting things going on in there if you find the right cards. Come with stickers. Looks like we got an all-star insert in there somewhere. Edgar Martinez, that's a good one. We'll put that aside we're right here. Pedro Guerrero that we learned about a few times ago and his uh, troubles after his baseball career. Joe McGrain. I feel like I've gotten a lot of these 90 Flair All-Star team inserts, and I never get good ones. But why would they also pick the one of him sticking his tongue out in a little tiny way? Such an odd choice. I would love to talk to anybody who worked as a baseball card picture picker, because I'm so interested in why some, some of these get chosen. Our second pack in 1994. These are coming straight from a box that I've got. So they are on, all in really, really good shape. Maybe we'll get that fantastically valuable Jose Uribe that everyone's always talking about. <laughs> Man, I just feel like this box of Fleer that I've been opening has given me the worst luck. So out of those two packs, we got one interesting card with Edgar Martinez, and that's it. Now, this is the 1990 Tops baseball yearbook stickers these are the uh, fun ones because they have superstars on one side and stickers on the other so Lonnie Smith but on the back side there's Bo Jackson they don't tell you who it is on the back side so you just have to guess so there's Bo Jackson Ozzie Smith on the superstar side and Mark McGuire on the other side let's give that to Mark McGuire we got Wade Boggs on this side and not sure who those guys are on that side. Not very descriptive. It's from the Griff. And Ellis Burks. And Roberto Alomar. Paired with Daryl Strawberry. And somebody on the Rangers. So we'll put that aside for Strawberry. And another one of these packs. These were super fun when I was a kid. Putting the stickers in the sticker book. Um, which is why I don't have many in my collection now, because I used them all. Terry Steinbeck. Kevin Mitchell. Looks like that's Cal Ripken on the left there. So that's worth uh, holding on to. Don Mattingly. With John Franco, I think. Chuck Finley and Kelly Gruber. And Jeff Russell. With... Jack Clark and Chris Boisio, maybe? Not sure who that last guy was in the Brewers. And one more pack of these stickers. These are super fun to, to get through because you get so many chances to get somebody good. So you got Eric Davis and Tony Gwynn. There he is with the all-star superstar card sticker there. Kevin Mitchell and... I don't know who 
those guys are. Vaughn Hayes. I don't know who those guys are either. I'm really starting to lose it. There's the good shot of Ozzy Smith there. We'll put that aside. And Mark Langston. With there's Dave Rigetti. All right. On to 1990 score. I'm actually curious here to see if these will all have the Dream Team inserts in there because all nine packs I've opened from this box so far from 90 score have had the Dream Team inserts. So maybe I just didn't understand that there's always an insert in there. Jim Abbott. Nope, this one doesn't have it. Cal Eldred, he went to the University of Iowa, so that's why he's I know him. Dennis the Lamp. Yeah, so this one did not have a Dream Team. There's a Juan Gonzalez rookie card, though. That's a good one to have. We'll put that aside. Um, so strange that uh, the first nine packs did, and then these don't. For those of you keeping score, the first nine packs I opened were from the bottom uh, right corner. So maybe it's a thing where they're always in the same location in the box. Something worth testing. Because these look like they're all, they're all going to be number one draft picks right after the, the lenticular uh, MVPs and look back cards. So not a whole lot. Oh, there's a Larry Walker rookie card. We'll take that one. All right, back to those 1986 league leaders. I do like the vibrant color they have on the back there. It's kind of fun. Steve Balboni. There's a Wade Bulge. All right, so not much in the way of my favorite Cubs players so far. We got that one Nolan Ryan, which is nice. Another Britt Burns. And there's a Don Mattingly. All right, on to 1991 score, Series 1. I like this set. Uh, just a huge set with a lot of subsets inside of it. And maybe you'll get a Mickey Mantle insert. You know, you never know. Roberto Alomar. Big head Jose Canseco there. I like that. Bobby Bonilla, Master Blaster. Bobby Thigpen. When it was turned around. All right, another 1991 score before we round it off with the Stadium Club. Another Steve Bouchelle. Yeah, so not a lot in there. Just that Jose can say. All right, jumping up to 1992 Top Stadium Club Series 3, because this was a pretty large set, if I recall. I think it was 900 cards or something like that. So there are a lot of people in here that maybe only played a little bit um, in the majors during the, that year. So you end up with a lot of strange people in here. But I do know that there are a couple of Nolan Ryans in this uh part of the set, so maybe we'll get lucky. There's a Jack Morris. It's a good picture of Greg Olson there. And Melito Perez, very nice. All right, so. Nothing to speak of there, except for that Jack Morris, maybe. And our last pack before we take a look at Britt Burns, who I know nothing about. So actually, I'd love to hear a little bit more about his career and then check out what happened to him after baseball, you know, for our series of whatever happened to that guy. Not a whole lot of interesting things going on in this these couple of packs. There's Tony's brother. Alan Trammell, that's something. 
and Dwight Gooden with holding a bat, which is not his norm. All right, so there's that. Let's see what Britt Burns was up to. He had a nice long career, but uh, tied for second in shutouts, with, tied for third in victories with 18, and sixth in strikeouts with 172. So let's take a look here. Uh, Britt Burns. American League base, uh, Major League Baseball player from 78 to 85. So this was his last year. So that card we have right there is his very last year. 70 wins, 60 losses, 366 ERA, 734 strikeouts. With the White Sox the entire time was an all-star in 81. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. 18 games for Chicago in 85. He's traded to the Yankees. But a hip condition put his career in hold before he could ever pitch for New York. After years of rehab, he attempted to come back in 1990. Made four unsuccessful minor league starts before finally retiring as a player. Oh, that's too bad. Was the minor league pitching coordinator for his hometown Houston Astros until 2010. Pitching coach for the Birmingham Barons, the White Sox AA affiliate through 2015. Oh, so there you go. So another lifelong baseball guy. Bit of a tragic story in the sense that he, uh, you know, after pitching for uh, a handful of years, seven, seven or eight years, then uh, just kind of falling victim to injury. But, you know, spending seven or eight years in the sun and the pros playing baseball, not a bad way to do it. Hopefully he's doing all right now and enjoying his well-deserved time off. Britt Burns, hats off to you. And for the rest of you, we'll see you next time.